Hi everyone, Age Graceful here. Welcome to my channel. Today I'll be participating in an open collaboration called Holiday Dishes from Around the World. This open collaboration is hosted by the Grace Life DIY and Home Decor channel and Penny's Lifestyle and Living channel. Since we all come from different parts of the world or country, what is your favorite dish? Today, I'll be doing chitterlings, or chitlins for short. Here you see a paperweight that I've had for some time. This rendering was done by Annie Lee, and Jess Original Images made her art into this paperweight in 2004. The name of the rendering is called 60 Pounds. As you can see, this woman is sitting here with six red buckets holding 10 pounds of chitterlings per bucket. She is comfortable. She has kicked off her shoes to relax and she's shown that she has gone to the market. I love this little paperweight. This is something that my family has eaten ever since I was a little girl. I would clean chitterlings to give them to my parents on the holiday to save them some work because it's very time consuming. I'm gonna tell you why. Before I get started, let me make a cup of coffee. This job is gonna take a while. I'm also going to remove my rings. There are a few things I'm gonna need first. I have a colander here to strain the chitlins as I clean them. I also have a large bowl, and then I have some white distilled vinegar. A pair of kitchen scissors is also handy. So here is a container with a bag from the grocery market that contains my chitterlings. I put them in this long dish to keep any juices from escaping into my refrigerator as the chitlings were unthawing. And here you can see those juices, but this is a pretty tightly sealed Cryovac plastic bag. I can see some areas here that are not cleaned and these are supposed to be already pre-cleaned, pre-washed chitterlings. But I like to go through them. Besides that, this is a brand that I've never used. Off to my side here in this other portion of the sink, I like to keep some sudsy water. Here is my receipt from the chitterlings. They were $32.99, the highest and most that I've ever paid for them. And this was only for five pounds. I could have gotten 10 pounds in a red bucket, but they were $39.99. Plus, they were dirtier. I already know that because the red bucket is always dirtier. So I'm going to begin to clean these chitterlings and I bet a lot of you who don't know what they are are still wondering what are chitterlings. Well, they are hog intestines. Chitterlings have been long known for as being a staple for African American peoples. Slaves were forced to eat the animal parts because their masters threw them away. They were cleaned and cooked. Slaves also ate 
butts of the oxen or cows and christened them oxtails. And I'm sure that you guys have heard of oxtails. The same thing calls for pigtails, pig feet, chicken necks, and hog jowls and gizzards. African Americans have been eating these animal parts for hundreds of years. And that's why they are still a tradition and a holiday favorite, especially at Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. So what I am removing is the inner lining, which holds hay and anything that the hog ate while it was still living before it passed through their intestines. When the hog is killed, the intestines are tossed down a long river, which is usually in the back of the slaughterhouse, to take out most of the debris. Then they are packaged up for sale. So pretty much I'm removing anything that I do not want to eat. Little black specks may have been mud or dirt because hogs eat any and everything. As I clean the chitlings, I'm going to rinse them off quickly because they'll need to be washed several times before I cook them. Then after I rinse them off, I'm just gonna deposit them into the colander or strainer to drain away the juices or water. In the bottom lower corner here, left-hand corner, this is the longest chitlin that I have ever seen in my life. And I just wanted to show you guys this long chitlin as I pull it out of the bag. And I think I had to fold it up to get it all into the camera so you guys could see. But my way to handle this was with the scissors. And here I'm just pouring off the excess uh, juices from the bag. I have a doctor's appointment, so I'm going to have to stop briefly, put these back into the refrigerator until I come back and then finish up this task. Before I leave for my appointment, I'm going to use this soapy water to clean up the area. I will thoroughly sterilize once I'm done. So I apologize if the camera is a little shaky, but as you can see here, um, I'm done uh, cleaning the chitlins. The bag is empty. I had to take a little break. Uh, I had a doctor's appointment, but this was the last little bit that I had left to clean. So now I'm just gonna bring them over here and pour them into the bowl with the ones that I did clean. So these are the cleaned chitlins. And this is what came off of them. So that's literally like at least two and a half pounds, well, maybe two pounds of the five pound bag. So even after I cook them, they won't be, there won't be this many. They're gonna cook down and it's just gonna be a small amount. So now um, my vinegar is next. So let me open up my vinegar. I need two hands, be right back. Okay, I should have took the vinegar cap off first, but I'm just gonna pour maybe two tablespoons on, and that's enough. Um, and then I'll just move them around in the bowl so that the vinegar kind of gets all uh, over the chitlins. And now I'm going to put these into the refrigerator until tomorrow and I will cook them tomorrow and I'll show you how that's done but it's just sad you know 
the cost of these things and you literally throw half of that away. They don't consider that. And these were the already cleaned. So you could imagine um, what I would have pulled off the ones in the red bucket. Now it's time for me to thoroughly clean and disinfect my sink. So to season my chitterlings, I'm going to need some aromatics. I use onion and celery. So I'll just do a rough chop on the onion and the same with the celery. So here I have the chitlins in the pot. I'm going to bring this up to a boil for about 15 or 20 minutes. It's called parboil. And I'm going to do that to remove any extra fat and any, well, it's kind of like washing them. So this is a good bath for the chitlins. As you see here, it's starting to bubble a little bit and boil. And so you see the white foam, that's what I want to pour off and start my pot all over again.
Okay, so back to the stove, my chitlins go with the aromatics. And they're going to take anywhere between four to five hours to cook. In terms of seasoning, I'll only be using salt and garlic powder. You don't want to put anything black back into your pot because if you have guests, they will suspect that it's dirt. You do not want your guest and family to think that you did not clean your chitlins good. So here are my simple seasonings. I waited until after the chitlins cooked down because I didn't know what I was going to be left with and I did not want to over season them. This is the pot as it cooks away and they're starting to become nice and tender as well as the aromatics are starting to cook up and become translucent. Well, my chitlins are all done. And since it's not a holiday, I just fixed a simple pan of cornbread. So tonight I will be enjoying some chitlings with hot sauce and a slice of cornbread. I enjoy using the Frank's red hot sauce that I have here in this bottle. You can use any kind of hot sauce or hot pepper that you like but this is what I prefer. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and that you learned a lot. Thank you for selecting my channel to watch. Take care.